Welcome back. I... <laughs> it's an hour, so I guess I'll try, since I'm reacting to it. I'm not just watching it, I'm reacting to the entire thing, so I guess I'll try to keep it short and concise when I speak, like now. We'll uh, play this maybe 1.25, 1.5, until he hits some stuff. Definitely gonna have maybe two, if not four, parts to this section. Just read this out so it's more structured. I get the points across. So welcome to the imposing energy revolution. That is our, our uh, primitive civilization, and that's what I'm calling us. We're only 300 years old as far as industrial revolution is concerned. We're only babies, and really we're a baby at the moment playing with a gun. So uh, now and this brings us into our enlisted stage where we can actually have the chance to go get into adulthood with implosive technology. An adult would not use implosive technology, so explosive technology, because it creates toxins and is planet destroying, and it shortens people's lives through the toxins it creates. So no sensible, mature civilization would use those technologies. And actually, to be looking for our technologies back in history, saying, oh, they must have been primitive because they didn't have these technologies. Well, they were smarter than we are, and they decided we don't want technologies that kill the planet and kill us. So they use technologies we can't identify because they're too simple. We got into this complicated mass. We had the 18th century, which is the age of enlightenment, where people observe nature and copied it. Our big mistake is to then try and quantify that with mass, which in itself is deficient, which I've gone through before. Our mass is only a fraction, and so is our language. And that's where we've lost the plot. So our language has only got one third of what it used to have. It used to have an imagery component, one third. It used to have one third. Uh, each number has a corresponding letter. Each letter has a corresponding number. We've lost that third. And then our third we've got less. We've, we've lost about half of that. So you could actually argue that we've only got 20% of our language yet. So how can we even explain 100% of what's going on in the universe when you've only got 20% of your own language that started? We are devolving. Right, we are losing information. We are not gaining wisdom. We are losing wisdom. Yes, we're gaining knowledge, and we're flooded with knowledge, but there's no wisdom. Because without the, the metric, without the model of the elements that I've done, you can't connect the disparate parts of all that huge amount of knowledge. So we're basically drowning in the sea of knowledge, and there's no rope of wisdom or life oil wisdom. I mean, that's pretty much the crux of his inlet, is that periodic table thing that doesn't have iron and other elements. <sighs> I have so many little things, but whatever. Basically, as a, you know, to summarize it, implosive technology is advanced technology. What we're doing now is retrograde. It is devanced. That is, we've devolved in language, we've devolved in science. And the trouble is that our mass is only a tiny, maybe 20% of the understanding of mass. And the Vedic mass, what, which we started with, has a whole different basis, and then I've rewritten in my notes that, that hopefully, but we'll be able to get that out to the world through AI, so I'll make a uh, Bendel AI clone, so we can get out to billions of people, but the fact is, is that the takeaway is, while saying how advanced we are, while we're actually headed over a cliff, the implosive technology is necessary now, and throughout history, the Bajra is a, is a talisman, a sign that we're coming into the age of enlightenment, because the, the bringing the Bajra, or an implosive turbine, has always been in nature legend. It was Indra brought forward, who was the god of London, thunder and lightning. Then you went from Indra to, you know, in Greek into Zeus, and then Mithril in the Romans. So it's always been in the whole historical library. It's always been in legend. And the Bajra has always been the tool with which to stop the destruction of the planet. So, um, okay. So now I'll read this out. Uh, Malcolm Bennett has invented a proprietary plasma moid induced atomic fusion process, which uses waters as a safe. That's no nuclear byproducts. There's no nuclear protein, which we call hydrogen, which is false because hydrogen as a group is not an element, but that's another educational point. It's a safe atomic fuel that produces negative toxic emissions. Now, engines. So boring. And then they come up with implosive technology. That's it. But they don't telepathy and all these, like, literal. Like, they, they don't use the Vajra, like a weapon. Like, hi ya! <laughs> come here, come here. Like, are you sure? <laughs> Like, it's just, it, it made me think of the explosive is devolve, implosive is evolve, which is an interesting concept, but it's also, like, well, no, there's devolving and evolving, and those two things have a plethora of aspects that maybe, maybe, ex I would agree, explosive is probably, if anything, devolving 
and therefore there is probably a counter of implosive on the, the evolve side of things but i wouldn't say like that's the full spectrum of change to evolve is that like that's pretty limited it's almost like just like all right guys everyone keep doing what you're doing everyone's doing a great job no one's made any mistakes at all we certainly shouldn't change a thing except for add this new technology I mean, that would be interesting. Uh, if, it, like, literally that's all it took. <laughs> Everyone's cool then. Oh, we have energy again. <laughs> I just don't... I can't, couldn't even fathom. Not even possible. And kept uh, of captured and stored atomic fusion energy. This proprietary device, once attached to an internal combustion engine, generates energy from a combination of preconditioned water, fuel, the motor's vacuum, and exhaust gases. The current technology, about 30% of all hydrocarbon fuel is wasted as heat. The Bendel Playboy energy engine will be the basis of the new revolution, and that is, as again, the positive revolution, where we mature. Our society matures, our uh, level of understanding increases, and our intellectual. Our internet increases, but these implosive forces are also self-reinforcing as far as once you understand that sacred geometry is the basis of this, and I'll refer you back to Randall Carlson, is that Randall has, has a <coughs> level of understanding which you can build these other understandings upon. But until you, and I suggest that every scientist is going to have to go back to school, they're going to have to relearn proper maths, and they're going to have to relearn, well, maybe even for the first time sacred geometry, because until you understand crystal form and charge in a geometric sense, you cannot understand plasmoid technology or MSAT plasmoid technology from water-based bubbles. The motor vacuum and exhaust gases are currently not about 30% of all hydrocarbon fuel is wasted as heat. So actually, that uh, really should be 60%. Um, so it's 30%, uh, 34% we use to, to drive the cars, and there's 66% waste in heat. But then the energy engine will be the basis of a new industrial revolution. Just performed on a working plasmoid energy engine prototype has proved the utility and efficiency of engines will revolutionise energy consumption across a whole range of markets and applications. It will become the go-to solution as running costs will be so low. And on that point, I want to just reiterate what I spoke to in other sections is that using the plasmoids, we can take crude oil and directly, just by applying a substrate with plasmoids in it, proprietary, obviously, but the world will have it, so that the oil industry can make 10 times what they're making now by selling protein, not oil. It's a perfect transition. No one loses, everyone wins. The oil companies are richer, God bless them. That's great for everyone. They can do more oil holes because we're going to need protein forever. And it's just a more, as I said, it's a, it's a movement from primitive feeding grain, which is like 10 times a lot. So you've got only 10% efficient feeding grain to animals to produce protein. That's so inefficient, only 90% waste. And all the atmospheric gases coming from there, the methane, which is particularly dangerous for the atmosphere, and it's positively charged. So that's not good. Get away from all that stuff and we go into a, a new industrial revolution which which includes a better that we start to be scientists not people just completely ignorant and spouting this as being oh but the science says when they have no idea what science is and no idea that the basis of what they were taught in chemistry physics is fundamentally flawed because the maths is not the correct maths read one hopes and you'll see the correct maths where the number that you thought was solid is not solid it is only a dimensional number it's only the product of some of those numbers that are important in the universe next so here we go, uh, following on with that. Explosive versus implosive technology. The worldwide climate ramifications over the next 40 years. The problem with our current society is that it has implemented... Only is a wrong statement. It's one thing if he wants to say that, like, there's another aspect that's not accounted for. But to say only... Only the... Zero out of ten matters, and nothing else. Don't, like, scale doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Nothing matters, except for one to ten. It's so simple, if only you could understand.
the instant gratification of explosive technologies, which are toxic, inefficient, and that is that, that as things explode, friction increases and temperature increases on anything it touches, so it's by definition inefficient, and which manifests death and destruction. That is, the toxic byproducts are explosive by nature. Now, how nature meant to use those forces was negative implosive force to bring the iron, the calcium, all the water, all the elements you need to create a, a living being, a baby, and then to grow, you bring in those substances. It's an implosive, naturally implosive force. Now, when you die, nature has a way of redistributing all those valuable resources, redistributing your carbon, redistributing the iron redistributed calcium. So that's the natural process. The unnatural process is to create a high positive charge, which is death and destruction, through chemical processes, through burning things which create high positive charge. Therefore, you're creating the agents of your own destruction, but more importantly, on the scale that we're doing it now with 8 billion people, the scale of that means it's not only individually destructive, but it's corporately and globally destructive. We're going to get right away from that because it's primitive and childish things that we're doing. We need to mature and do things in an adult way, not a child with a gun, a loaded gun. He's talking down. We're gonna do things like I don't know, like a child, like an adult child, dude. Say that to a child. See what's up. A child be like, what you? <laughs> Here we go. These are incompatible with the natural principles of the constructive and implosive life forces used by nature, which produce no toxic byproducts. So nature works through implosion, which has no friction and it concentrates energy as opposed to explosion which has huge friction and huge losses and dissipates energy. So obviously dissipating energy is lost, that's why by just doing, using explosive technology you lose 66% of it. Concept of adult and child I think is ridiculous because truly no one's an adult. It's a scam. The concept of an adult is a scam. It's a lie. So at, at least, like, maybe an adult, I would, if anything, is, like, God mode. Like, waking up. And anything before then, upon waking, will look childish. And then there's, like, an adult phase of, like, fully awakening Christ consciousness. Other than that, I don't think there's a true adult anything. It's a, just a literal scam so that governments can impose their will on people. That's one of the main reasons. Another reason, so that dudes can be like, what do you mean? She was 18? She was 18? What do you mean? Well, I'm sure I'm 52, but she was 18. What do you mean? Okay. <clears throat> it's just like, what are we doing here? All the energy you source, whether it's a block of coal, a block of wood, gas, petrol, diesel, kerosene, bitumen, it doesn't matter what you're burning, bunker fuel. If you're using an intrinsically explosive force, then you're naturally going to lose 66% of that energy, which means you go to the petrol pump, you buy $3 worth of petrol, $1 goes to drive the car, $2 goes to your contribution to polluting the planet. If you use implosive technology, in the retrofit, this is just a temporary retrofit, to transition us like a drug addict, we have to get off the drug of explosion, which is very self-gratifying in, you know, in the short term, but life-destroying in the long term. So get off that drug, get onto the implosive technology, which will empower individuals, empower our society to move on to our interplanetary expeditions and and still keep a, a pristine planet with which to visit back upon. The force of nature on them again. We need imposing. He ain't heard about no doom shape, bro. <laughs> Energy. We do not need explosives. It is death and destruction. It is only for redistributing dead things. We do not want to die before our time simply because we produce death producing explosive byproducts. At the current rate of exposure to toxic gases emanating from jet, rocket, and all internal combustion engines, the Earth's protective protection from harmful UV rays has been reduced to the point where environmental science has shown the Earth is now in serious danger. Now, the positive side is with the increase in CO2, there's been a 7%, probably 8% by now, greening of the planet because the CO2 levels were, after the last ice age, down to 180 parts per million, 130 parts per million of the complete destruction of the planet, or, or living things on the planet. So that's besides the plasmoids and the rocks, but the living things on the planet. Uh, on a planet uh, such as us, the biological life, would have been, was about to be extinguished. 
up to the Industrial Revolution has gone up to 218 the number of burning fires and burning forests. We got up to now about over 400 parts per million. But just as a reality check for those people screaming about CO2, yes, our technology gets rid of CO2, but it's a management thing and there has to be a sensible scientific conversation about we're in a stage now where we're mature enough to say what level of CO2 do we want because when you go into a picture theatre or a lecture theatre where you've got lots of people, you'll have uh, levels of CO2 at around about 1,500 to 2,000 parts per million as opposed to fresh air, which is about now 400 parts per million. So obviously you do not drop dead at those levels in a lecture theatre. You may go to sleep, but you don't drop dead. The point is, is that when the dinosaurs were roaming the earth, it was probably 5,000 parts per million. Now all that carbon got locked up underneath the ground in the geological strata, which is called coals or shales. So that carbon is locked up, and that's why the Earth was in danger, because the carbon was locked underneath the ground. And by bringing it up and re reseeding the Earth with carbon, but you don't drop lead. The point is, is that when the dinosaurs were roaming the Earth, it was probably 5,000 parts per million. Now all that carbon got locked up underneath the ground in the geological strata, which is called coals or shales. So that carbon was locked up, and that's why the Earth was in danger, because the carbon was locked underneath the ground. And by bringing it up and re reseeding the Earth with carbon, that's why there's been a 7 or 8% greening of the planet, because they don't have to have so many stomata or breathing mouths to breathe when there's a double concentration and half the amount of open mouths and they don't lose, plants don't lose that moisture, which means plants are now drought resistant. I'm bringing it up. Oh my god. I believe that he generally accepts that they are fossil fuels. I believe he does. But they're not. Maybe coal. I haven't. I'm not sure about coal. But oil for sure is not from fossils. It's from the earth. And to remove it is to remove like the oil from your engine. It's really not good. We shouldn't just like be like, well. We still got all this oil. <laughs> like if we got a new if we got a new technology, we should really seriously be like, uh that oil though? What do you think about mama bear here? You think she likes to get a little No, never mind. <laughs> in addition to being more Energetic because, because they can grow fast, that's why you have these massive dinosaurs, dinosaurs and massive plants because, plants because they have a plentiful, plentiful supply of CO2 and, and high oxygen levels at the same time. So, anyway, so the cost to the public worldwide involving the use of process fossil fuels is grossly excessive when compared to the cost of utilizing water based engines and motors. And that goes back to the beginning of this presentation where we showed two things which are very telling is that the how tube diagram is basically shows that you know, there's enough energy in a glass full of water. And I want everyone just to pause and think about that. Look at a glass full of water. Go and fill up a glass full of water and look at it for a while and think, how can this boil all the oceans of the world? I've just told you how. Right, so that's a lot of energy. And, of course, there's vested interest groups. But what I'd say to those groups is that we need to mature and we need to use real science and we need to manage things better and to be open to change because there's always resistance. You know, the world was going to end. when the railway came, what it did for the, I suppose, for the Indians, but uh, for the Western society, that was a positive change. And it was those engineers that learnt about pistons, which were then the first ones that were hired when the automobile industry came along. And everyone was saying, oh, the, cab you know, the carriage makers will go out of business. No, they made carriages for cars instead of horses. And, and every industrial revolution has an exponential rise in individual wealth because there's so many opportunities. There's not enough people to do all the jobs we need to do, and we have to retool our whole society. But now we have the energy to do it because we don't have to pay for petrol. We do not have to have uh, somebody that acts as God and steps between the planetary power plant and you because and puts, tries to put a meter on it, like with Nikola Tesla with the planetary power plant. He proved it worked. He drove from, from Canada to Miami with just seven aerials and a tuned electric motor. Now, for those despicable human beings who would even try and suggest that the very man that uh, created alternating current, which is the only reason I'm standing here in the light and with cameras on, all using alternating current, and to put out the, the despicable and putrid lie that Nikola Tesla did not know what he was doing when our whole society is based on him, for those individuals, just leave society. Go out and live on an island by yourself. Good luck without alternating current. Right, so watch what you say and watch where you're headed. Because
So with the planetary power plant, he proved it worked. He drove from, from Canada to engineers that learned about pistons, which were then the first ones that were hired when the automobile industry came along. And everyone was saying, oh, the, you know, the carriage makers will go out of business. No, they made carriages for cars instead of horses. And, and every industrial revolution has an exponential rise in individual wealth because there's so many opportunities. There's not enough people to do all the jobs we need to do and we have to retool our whole society. But now we have the energy. to do it because we don't have to pay for petrol we do not have to have uh, somebody that acts as god and steps between the planetary power plant and you because and tries to put a meter on it like with nikola tesla with the planetary power plant he proved it worked he drove from from canada to miami with just seven aerials and a tuned electric motor now for those despicable human beings who would even try and suggest that they're very miami with just seven aerials and a tuned electric motor now, for those despicable human beings, he drove from, from Canada to Miami with just seven aerials and a tuned electric motor. Now, for those despicable human beings, I would even try and suggest that the very man that Uh, created alternating current, which is the only reason I'm standing here in the light and with cameras on, all using alternating current. And to put out the, the despicable and putrid lie that Nikola Tesla did not know what he was doing when our whole society is based on him, for those individuals, just leave society. Go out and live on an island by yourself. Good luck without alternating current. Right, so watch what you say and watch where you're headed because this technology will come in and those who are behind it will you know, benefit more greatly than those that are still in the Stone Age and want to stay there because actually... Damn, I was muted. I don't know how long that was. Fuck. I'll have to find out when I'm done, I guess. How long was I muted? <laughs> Shit, I'd hate to record a bunch. I know I was fine not that long ago, so I should be fine. Sorry, guys, if it was a while. But he was talking about Tesla... And kind of being a little, like, standoffish for no apparent reason. And, like, doing this, like, again, talking down and shit-talking the... I guess, same. <laughs> but just, like, right out the gate, though. It doesn't make any sense unless you're just, like used to people naysaying but you literally haven't spoken yet like this dude hasn't even really presented his work so what the fuck does he want oh I don't know. how dare you question tesla my god <laughs> like he still didn't have like a theory like i was saying before like, yeah, of course he uh, was a brilliant man. I'm not denying Tesla's impact on society by, like, pointing out that was a little weird. <laughs> it was just too much. I think it's because he probably gets a lot of pushback because from more so mainstream people who just are like, Tesla's not that great. <laughs> People just, like, Nikola Tesla is barely known until you get old enough to 
hear about them more so through like uh, popular science than through like the the system itself if you will the one imposed on us he becomes i mean maybe there's people who hear about him like literally in school at like high school level but i don't think uh, that he was mentioned in my high school from physics class it's really just new in like and at the end oh yeah and then there's some some other concepts but like tesla i don't think it even came up i think tesla i don't even know if i ever learned about tesla from a school whatsoever and i think it's because he's just not that accepted in the mainstream although obviously it created it like he's saying ac like that's a pretty big deal but that doesn't mean just because the man had an input on ac that he is like unquestionable like still gotta like understand And using someone's name, like like Tesla, Tesla is a perfect example because it literally happened already with Tesla, the car company that just uses someone's name to like gain street cred. Noted. 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 <laughs> You have to acknowledge the people who work before you, such as Nikola Tesla. The further you go back in history, the further you can go forward in life. You ignore history at your peril, because history proves it. What about Newton, dude? Because what I saw so far was utterly, pretty much ignoring everything. So he's saying, you gotta pay attention to Nikola Tesla, but ignore everything else. It doesn't really matter. All you really need is this... Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, zero, well, ten, one, one, one. They're the same law. Plus, the spiral of elements, of the periodic table of missing elements. The periodic table of missing elements. <laughs> uh, shit, sorry, I know it's kind of ironic because I have the periodic table of currents missing elements but they're not in the middle they're literally after 20 so like yeah it's missing a bunch of them because i haven't gotten to them <laughs> uh. if the society doesn't move on with new technology it simply dies and dissipates you know you have many empires that from genghis khan through to the ottoman empire through to the roman empire the greek empire you know empires pass technology remains the same Nothing new under the sun. And in our society, it seems like the giants that we're standing on the shoulders of, we're knocking down all their monuments. They're our ancestors and they're the people that built the society we currently have, so we should be more mindful of their contributions and more appreciative of the sacrifices they've made, especially Nikola Tesla. He paid a huge price personally for bringing new technology in the world. It's a fantasy to think I mean, that's, that's, that's true, but like, that's irrelevant to you. Do you understand? He's just, I guess because his work is based on it, it's somewhat relevant. <laughs> it's just, my point is, he's kind of piggybacking it in a way. Pardon me, Newton. <laughs> Hopefully you accept me as your piggybacker. Apple falls on my head. Gets thrown in my head, though. Like, that wasn't gravity. If we keep on spraying jet fuel into the atmosphere and charging it positively, right? Jet fuel and salt. So basically, and then the worst possible place you could put it would be at 35,000 feet, and that's where we put it. It's only the negative charge of the atmosphere that's holding the atmosphere in place. And in between this assuming country, which is our zero point, which this whole presentation has been about using the zero point energy. Zero point does exist, it has to exist because if you have a positive negative charge and you put them together, something has to be at that zero point. 
it, 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 it has to be a point in space time. Zero point is real, it's assumed cavity, so one can look up between the ice sphere and the atmosphere. But again, going back to that, ships should not be using bunker fuel with sulfur. What did he just say to me? The soul should gather. Something has to be at that zero point. It, it, there it has to be a point in space time. Zero point is real, it's a human cavity, so one can look up between the ice sphere and the atmosphere. But again, going back to that, ship should not be used. Nope. Wrong. The sulfur needs to be removed from fuel, and it needs to be removed from uncle fuel, and the sulfur needs to be removed, removed from jet fuel. These are the most destructive instrument. It's everywhere. The zero point's not at this place or that place. It's everywhere. That we have on the planet at the moment, and it needs to stop now. So now you have the knowledge, now society have the power to change. Fair enough, bro. Fair enough. So here's the factory here, which is the Delight factory where I did the first MSAT plasmoid prototypes. You can see here is the manufacturing area. There's 160 employees working on high voltage electronics, which is involved with the Vajra, which I'll go into later. But here's myself overseeing the construction of our thunderstorm generator. And here is a video that's actually embedded in this presentation that uh, we're documenting with thermocouples and with computers, the energy equation for the motor and documenting the composition of the exhaust. This is just a petrol motor, put the tank above so you can have a full view and put everything in there. But this was the first. And again, with all the prototypes, uh, it's 50 years work. Every machine that I've imagined in my mind has worked first time. Then even the, when we built recently, we actually had the guy that asked me to build it three months later it came. And I was still bolting on the last things and said, well, this is the first test. And that was for proof that this technology would use, can be used as a waste energy recovery system for coal and wood fired furnaces. You know, so, and that, so, and we were there and we put up the monitors and everything and the smoke was coming out. We turned on the technology, no smoke, uh, no CO2, no carbon monoxide and pure clean air coming out of it, so uh, oxygen. Just shows you how the fundamental principles of the plasmoid's action, the MSAT plasmoid, which is based in water, which is non-harmful, whereas the plasmoid greater than air is called a plasmoid, but I do that out of respect for the first person that identified it in our modern literature, which is identified in the Bible, which is also in section one, is that uh, God identifies the names and the plasmoids actually speak back to God. So they're sentient beings and uh, we've got unfortunate communication with them. So, but this is an... It's a lightning. <laughs> ...opportunity with a hype. That's a casual reference because that probably is a literal truth that there was someone named Job and there was someone who went by God who was called and known God the Lord who spoke to him and said those words that he's talking about in the totality of the basis of the words where they're saying I did that shit motherfucker did you that's what that was the tone did you did you It wasn't some uh, talking to plasmoids. I just, I mean, it only says lightning. Plasmoids 
if he's just saying plasmoids are lightning and his device creates lightning contained in a vortex that then implodes identified in the Bible, which is also in section one, is that uh, God identifies the names and the plasmoids actually speak back to God. So they're sentient beings and uh, we've lost, unfortunately. They don't speak back. He said, God says, Job, the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. And then down. Who shut up the seed behind behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in darkness. Like that's it's pretty much it. I did that, motherfucker. Tone. That's what it is. That's what the tone is. Can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? Can you loosen Orion's belt? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you? Sir, yes, sir, here we are. <laughs> it just isn't the same as what he's saying. They're not... <sighs> it's not like they're... I mean, yes, they're sentience. I agree. I, honestly, I agree that everything is sentience. In the, like, how uh, vast is his host? Legion is his host. Something of that nature. Something like that. No, I don't know if it says Legion. Legion's more like the dark thing. I'm not sure what I'm quoting. <laughs> it's been a while since I really looked at this stuff. Stuff I know that's a thing from somewhere. I thought it was from the Bible and something I could easily find. Uh, I think it's from... I want to say the book of Revela Revelation, honestly. But it might just be an, a prophecy about the end times. that, Or maybe it's Jeremiah. I don't know. So, but this is an opportunity with a higher consciousness and getting away from planet destroying technologies to planet enhancing technologies. We can... This is the technology too, and it always has been. The Vajra was always, the Avatar always comes with a Vajra, and the Vajra always cleans up the planet, the, uh, all the stuff that all the demons have created. So the next, so here again is a larger thing of this again. This is the reaction, it's called a reaction time. This is, but there's the thunderstorm generator. Again, just so you can see where the negative charge is sitting on these uh, spheres and the negative charge coming in here and against the positive charge here. So this is positively charged and this is negative charge. The collision point between those two events is around about here where we've got it and that's where you see uh, seen in the previous sections where there's an implosion where the population of plasmoids, uh, MSAT plasmoids get so intense that their combined zero points collapse the pipe but because they like to live in square structures and doesn't collapse a pipe in a, in a circle, it collapses it in uh, squares. So anyway, the next. So here in, is in honor of, I made this and I presented as 
basically, unfortunately, like to live in square structures. What a f just words. Isn't this a based on sacred geometry and a fundamental understanding thereof? Stanley Meyer, who was murdered by people, greedy, stupid people, who were basically representing the oil industry. And so the oil industry itself needs to learn a lesson then. What, if you can change your oil and make 10 times as much money as protein, why murder everyone that's trying to bring forth a new technology to save the planet? We're all on the planet. So, grow up. You know, you can't have it both ways. If you want to destroy the planet, keep going the way you're going. If you want to uh, enhance the planet and provide technology to... There's literally no one who's watching this who doesn't already agree with this. There's no reason to say that. To go and explore, and explore other planets and, and expand our horizons and empower people. people. This, uh, I say, say, I think it's a very clear point that there's two, two things you can do in, with the power that you have in your life. That you can use your power to empower others, or you can use your power to... Dude, I didn't come here for a fucking motivation speech. I came here for what the fuck you're talking about. Disempower others. At the moment, I'd say the oil industry, for the last hundred years, Starting with J.P. Morgan and the destruction of Nikola Tesla, you have, you have 7.5 billion people and having optimum population out to destructive forces. Having sway, because I said I'm calling on the 144,000. There's enlightened people at the moment need to step forward and basically tell the truth. And this is... Huh. <sighs> need to. You mean people need to get the fuck out of the way? I'm pretty sure that's what you actually mean. <laughs> because I said I'm calling on the 144,000. There's a lot of people at the moment need to step forward and basically tell the truth. And this is what we're doing here is simply this memorial to. Stanley Meyer is that this here is a needle that creates a plasmoid. So plasmoids were developed, and that's why he was murdered, because plasmoids are the key to our future. And the knowledge of them, as the Sanskrit, uh, just paraphrasing the Sanskrit text says, when plasmoids, and in sat plasmoids, the cause of all causes are known. Everything knowable is known, and nothing remains unknown. That's a simple truth. So, basically... It says the word plasmoids. Come on, dude. Don't fucking do that. What are you, fucking King James Bible? It says capital letter... What? Where? where? Well, it must have meant... It says it. Okay. Cap... Oh, he's... Jeez. He's I. Just fucking. <laughs> Plasmoids. You can't see my heart, maybe, with the sock in it. Just paraphrasing the Sanskrit text says, when plasmoids, and then sat plasmoids, the cause of all causes are known. Everything. When the cause of all causes are known, Sanskrit. Let's see what else. Noble is known, and nothing remains unknown. That's a simple truth. Everything knowable is known, and nothing, blah blah blah, nothing, blah, something. Let's see. Okay, we found the source of the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad. I shall now declare unto you in full this knowledge, both phenomenal and noumenal. Noumenal? Noumenal? Noumenal. What the hell is that? I guess that's like normal. Noumenal. 
assessing a real rather than phenomenal. Wait, what does phenomenal mean? Made it. <laughs> I mean, it's still real. I guess unreal. I don't know. By knowing, so maybe real, unreal and real or something. By knowing which there shall remain nothing further to be known. Oh. Complete knowledge includes knowledge of the f phenomenal world. And this, the knowledge of the unreal world and the spirit behind it. The source of both of them is transcendental knowledge. The Lord wants to explain. Okay, this is just translation or interpretation. Phenomenal knowledge. Phenomenal knowledge unto you. I with... knowledge, with real knowledge, unreal knowledge unto you, I, with real knowledge, this shall explain in full, which knowing, not in this world further, anything more knowable remains to be known. Um, <sighs> Krishna is the cause of all causes. So he is the supreme cause of all causes. Let's go to seven. Two. There must be a larger chapter. So the Supreme Personality of God had said, Now hear, O son of Pritha, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, with mind attached to me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. I shall now declare unto you in full this knowledge, both phenomenal and numinous. This being known, nothing further shall remain to, for you to know. Out of many thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection. And of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego, all together, these eight constituent or constitute my separate se separated material energies. Besides these, O oh mighty ar armed Arjuna, there is another superior energy of mine, which comprises the living entities who are exploiting the resources of this material, inferior nature. All created beings have their source in these two natures. Of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world, know for certain that I am both the origin and the dissolution. 
O conqueror of wealth, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me, as pearls are strung on a thread. Plasmoids. So out of context. It's just too out of context. It's one thing if it's like scientifically out of context where like the context is the interpretation and the out of context out of context acts aspect is the data that is taken out of the context of the interpretation and put into a new interpretation that's one thing but if we're reading scripture And just taking this line and saying, paraphrasing, of course, plasmoids, like it doesn't, it makes no sense. I'm sorry, dude. That made no, that made no sense. That made no sense. I mean, maybe it makes some sense in some levels, especially just like in your mind not in like a not in a negative way in his mind in that it's literally the he's the most aware of the reasons he would say that so maybe it made sense in his mind but i made no damn sense in my mind <laughs> so basically we can die in the dark or we can take on and this is a normal spark oh, that we are simply replace that's just got a tiny little spark you can replace it with this which has this inside it which is a plasmoid generator. It has a casing, the fuel comes in here, goes down and is injected out onto this, so it's a fuel injection device as well. And we're working with uh, RK Lab and uh, Gavin Horton because uh, he's actually produced a high pressure injector that we want to hybrid between his high pressure injector, which is you know, uh, self-activating, that this would self-activate this device. I mean, we. In the factory, the Derlite factory, we created all these ceramics, uh, designed, built, and handmade to see this. And I also give a plug for Bosch. They had the Bosch Platinum Fusions pipe. So, good on you, mate. On you, mate. Yep. That's uh, the Stanley Meyer story, and anyone who was poisoned, and I have some experience with that, so I can tell you that poisoning seems to be the the method of choice for those who want to have plausible deniability for someone's death. Think about it and want my life. Next. You mean like Maxwell Chicken Batu? I believe that was his name. If I got it right, I'm going to be so proud of myself. I'm so proud. I already know it's right. I already know it's right. <laughs> Ooh, alien evasion. Ah. I'm excited to watch that Cause of the Men video. So here I developed the new generation of implosive turbines, <coughs> which is a new revolutionary thing that you actually have the spark plugs on the outside firing into a um, center. And you can see here, these are uh, the sacred 51.84 degrees, which is the angle of the, uh, the Keops pyramid. It's also the amount of seconds in a day. 5184, five, sorry, six days of creation, uh, 5184, uh, 500,400, and also the moon travels its own diameter every hour, so therefore in uh, 24 hours it travels 51,840. 5184 is a sacred number because it's a, it is a mirror image, mirror plane, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 8, 9, 10, 10, 9, 8. He doesn't give me the impression of someone who honestly discovered a new invention. Although, if, he, if he's been at it long enough, he's not going to be all excited. I just feel like if he truly had realized that he came up with something, he would have tried to share it far sooner and all the preparation time maybe in the eyes of people thinking oh well blah 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 kind of reasonings 
makes sense, but like, dude, if you got a new invention, like, what are you doing? It makes, n it literally makes no sense. Like, he should have utterly stopped everything and started to get, like, promoting it to a point where he wasn't hiding. Like, it, it doesn't really make sense. I know that it took someone like Randall Carlson, maybe, to boost him into the spotlight, but at the same time, like, I just don't know. I just think of, uh, like, someone who's just, like, s almost surprised and just, like, innocently happy and, like, proud of themselves for something that they, like, truly feel uh, to, like, to have accomplished that w is, like, a good thing and they're, like, really proud of it because they're... Like, wow, I did the thing. <laughs> like, I don't get that feel from him. He's much more just, like, business. And... I just... Just, like, it's steady, utterly steady state. Which, to me, is either... I don't, I don't know what to make of it. It doesn't make sense. Unless he's... Like kind of scammy and thinking that he's like certainly he's obviously working on something and has reasonings for his actions throughout that are like why he does the things in his own mind again but I don't, I don't know Let's just keep going. It's the only way to know if it actually makes sense. My, th I mean, a lot, a lot. There's definitely a lot of people who miss. You know, miss, they try and they miss. That's how it goes. That's life. For the, my friends in India, in Brahma, all time is three one one zero four zero, which is. That's why big discoveries are fucking huge, because usually it's just, in terms of people trying to create new technology or something, usually there's a lot of misses when it comes to stuff like this. Like, obviously, like, something like, oh, a new vacuum cleaner design, like, okay, like, that's, that type of thing's happening all the time, and there's not that many misses besides, like, well, we like this way, and well, you know, that's not a bad idea, Tim. All right, Johnny. And then they, you know, they do the thing, but, like, in terms of, like, fundamentally advancing the collective society, like, that new vacuum design, maybe, maybe like, a little bit... But something of this nature it would be huge if it were to be true, so, like, it's just gonna be filled with misses, or else it's gonna be, like, jumping us so far ahead. So there's no arguments between the brothers, so we're all enlightened and we can all move on, hopefully. So, anyway, here's one that's actually the Taurus shape, which is a bit cheeky. I actually produce all enlightened and we can all, in Brahma, all time is 311040, which is... Five one eight four hundred times sixty, just so there's no arguments between the brothers. So we're all enlightened, then we can all move on, hopefully. So anyway, here's one that's actually the Taurus shape, which is a bit cheeky. I actually produce the Taurus shape, and so that when these come together, these produce a zero point. So and and uh, and here's the here's the spark plugs. This is before we put the spark plug apertures, but the spark plugs come in here. They fire. In quadrature,
Oops, I said this needs structure, not just like the subtle structure he has where it's like a bowl with a little ch chakra. It's pretty much two chakras that then come together and have a space of a figure eight space. But, uh, like... I, I would suspect that just creating like an ammonite type of structure where there's more detail would have a better outcome. I would suspect. Just a thought. And we have a, a negative and positive spark plug. And that creates a go to the center. So the imposive cylinder head concentrating force into a tungsten carbide sphere. And that's a little sphere that's inside that two halves of the sphere with little entrances to it. An impulsive piston with rings, hydraulic diameter, and cylinder head, cylinder with four platinum fusion spark plugs. Right, there's the spark plugs. But I actually tested those, and I tested those against Stanley Myers. Plays more in general. Which I'll go back to that again because it seems like that, uh, more so probably than the fact that he was running his tower and water, was the fact that. He, he was, was using, using plasma and plasmoid and a plasmoid generator. That scared a lot of people because, because they, they don't, don't want you to know that. that. But, but now you do. do. Now it's, it's on you. So, so this, this is the design, design and of course this, this is, is the operation. I'm pretty sure that that didn't happen. I don't believe it. I'm just going to be honest. I don't believe it. And you'll see my big, big apparatus previously shown was a device for testing that, which had one inch thick plate for good reason. And one inch thick plate. There's got to be evidence that he did it, or else it didn't happen, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> like a newspaper article. I don't, I don't know. I haven't looked into it, except for enough to be like... That it to see that it's questioned, and like it, it's not, it's false. It didn't happen kind of responses and I know that fact checking is pretty bad online but when it comes to Tesla I'm not sure why that would be denied so uh, if there was actually like an article about it or like a, like a fucking it's one thing like a quote but another when he invented a car and drove it uh, thousands of miles without uh, filling the gas tank but Okay, I'll be back. I'll be back. Peace.